Nicholas, welcome to Washington. It's been some exciting times for some and trying times for others in, in Europe these days with the recent Brexit vote. Tell us what the impact is going to be. Thanks, Dan. Always love coming to Washington, a crazy town with very engaged people politically, and it's uh, been very interesting to talk about this with a lot of people since I've been here. Um, the Brexit referendum result was not that expected in Britain, where many people assumed that uh, the Remain side would win. But interestingly, in Europe, on, in Brussels, many of us had expected that Britain would leave the European Union for quite a long time. So we were saddened but not surprised by what happened. And it's a major upset for the European Union, there's no denying that. You have one of the largest member states leaving, you have the potential for disruption to the wider picture of the free market. Um, of the, uh, the European market that's been developed over many decades. Um, and you've got, for the first time, a major territory leaving and throwing the integration process of the European Union into reverse. This has not really happened before. Um, Greenland left in the 1980s, people forget that. A small French island left a few years ago, you can, you can pretty much ignore that. But uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland leaving, that's quite a big, a big difference. How do you think the transition will be done and how long will it take? Well, in theory, it should take two years from the moment that Britain gives its formal notification that it wants to leave. When that trigger will happen is something that is still being discussed very much by the new Prime Minister, uh, by her Minister for Leaving Europe, and uh, by the new Minister in charge of international trade deals, that's Theresa May, David Davis, and Liam Fox. Um, obviously, the longer that Britain leaves it before pulling the trigger on the departure, the more they'll be able to prepare for getting a good deal. On the other hand, the parameters for getting a good deal may not be there in the first place. And I think the government will face a lot of domestic pressure to get the process going sooner rather than later. Certainly from the rest of Europe, people just want to get it over with. How did it happen? How did everybody miss it? Well, as I said, a lot of us in the, outside the UK expected it to right, come. Right, in the UK. But yeah, I mean, of course, there was a, the, the pollsters were pretty upfront about their lack of confidence in their own data on this one. Um, they all said consistently, we have never had a vote like this before. We do not know how our normal assumptions about polling will translate into the actual result. And I thought they were, I thought they were gratifyingly modest about the, the potential inaccuracies of their, of their own predictions. That still doesn't answer your question, because your question is, how the heck did this happen in the first place? Um, how on earth does it happen that a country that has benefited greatly from European Union membership makes the decision to turn its back on all that and, and walk away? And I think there were two intersecting factors that led to the Brexit. The first was that there's been a relentless campaign against Europe from the media, from most of the media over the last 20 years. And we've seen you know, fantasy stories about the European Union regulating cucumbers and schools and whiskey and balloons and all kinds of total rubbish, which nonetheless has been printed in the, in the British media. A tradition started, interestingly, by Boris Johnson when he was the uh, Daily Telegraph correspondent in Brussels. Um, and faced with that sort of barrage of, uh, of, of fact-free commentary, it's been very difficult to turn the corner. So that's the first factor. And the second factor is the wider feeling of dissatisfaction that some people have been left behind by recent economic growth. They've certainly been left behind by recent economic slumps. Um, and a feeling that they must fight back against authority using the only way they can, which was to vote against the way that they were being told they must vote for their own good.